This video will cover using the cruise sheet entry wizard to pay hourly, piecework, and break time in one step. If you have not already set up your cruise, you can watch the training videos for setting up cruise from our website, datatechag.com, and go to the webinar recordings, day two payroll setup, and the third video covers setting up cruise. To begin, we'll review two items that need to be set up in order to properly create the break entries. The first is under payroll, setup, and then rest and recovery time. This setup tells the program what wage code and job to use when the break entries are created. You may have multiple entries in the rest and recovery non-productive time definitions set up for prior safe harbor reporting. However, we want one line to define what job and wage code will be used when the rest and recovery is created. So we'll have a line here with our wage type for rest and recovery, the job code that we want to use for the break time line, the type should be set to rest and recovery, and the default check marked. This default will tell the program that this is the line to use when the breaks are created. The second item that needs to be defined is in the program setup. This is under the tools menu. So we'll go into program setup. We'll go to our payroll tab for our payroll module. And then under our minimum wage overtime tab, we need to put that same wage code used for the breaks in the default wage types. So if you use an alternate code, for example, some of our customers use BT for break time, you can enter that in. Here I have RR for my wage code for breaks. So now let's begin our cruise sheet entry wizard. So we'll go to our daily payroll entry. Hopefully you're already familiar with your daily payroll entry window. And what we do to begin is we just right click on the first line and go to Cruise Sheet Entry Wizard. The Cruise Sheet Entry Wizard is designed to guide you through the process. So it's going to tell you right at the top. Start by entering the crew, grower, crop, or ranch, and job for the cruise sheet you're entering. So I'll go ahead and select my crew. Select what field they were working in what job they were doing, our GL number for our payroll labor, the grower that will be getting billed, and then we can click the little button here next to the cruise sheet number to, ex to assign our next timesheet number. If you don't use it, that's okay. You can leave that blank, but that identifies each uh, timesheet with a unique identifier. Makes it easier for running reports and reviewing payroll. If you're a farming operation, then you would additionally have your crop year for your cost accounting. So we just go ahead and hit next to go to the next step. And now we tell the program what type of cruise sheet we're using. For our example today of doing hourly piecework and rest and recovery time, we want to do a daily sheet and do one day at a time. So I'll go ahead and select my date here and hit next to continue. So now we're going to define the wage code for our payroll. And here's the trick with hourly and incentive. You want to start by using the wage code BH for base hourly. And you can notice at the end it says incentive pay. That's what um, tells the program that we are going to be paying an hourly and a piecework. So when we select that, then we're going to have two different um, entries. One is our hourly pay rate and then one is our piece pay rate. Now if they did different jobs um, or different uh, pack styles during the day and there's a third piece rate there is an option to do two different piece rates but most of the time you're just going to be dealing with an hourly and a piece rate. Now if the employees get um, individual hourly rates, different hourly rates based on what's in their employee file. You can select that. You can select to exclude the supervisor. 
or down below you can see there's an option to pay the supervisor a different pay rate so let's say he gets a salary then we can pay him the salary instead of hourly like the rest of the crew if your pieces go out to four decimal places then you can also select the option display pieces to four decimals so now we're going to put in our hours. So what we want to do is we want to um, go ahead and still break out our um, rest time. So we're going to have our regular hours. If there is a default on the number of pieces, for example, if multiple employees did the same amount of vines or rows and there's a commonality in the pieces, you can enter that in. Otherwise, we can just leave that blank. If you are doing um, two different piece rates, then you have the default for the number of pieces, number two there. And then we have our break time. Now if you're in an area where you provide daily advances and those get deducted from the employee's check, you can also enter that there. So based on how the cruise sheets were printed, alphabetic or account number order, you'll select that so that the next page, um, or actually this, this um, page after the next one, will come up in the same order that the timesheets were printed. And this is one of the reasons why um, we recommend using this with pre-printed timesheets so that the employees come up in a grid in the same order that they appear on the timesheets and it makes your payroll a lot easier, a lot faster to enter. Now when we do those crew sheets, we always have some blank lines because you're always going to have some employees that move around. So the next option is if there were employees that were added by the crew sheet to um, by hand, we can go ahead and select that and then we get this pop-up to go in and add the employees that were added to the crew sheet by hand that were not previously assigned to the crew. So I can go ahead and select those employees here. And when I get to my final step of modifying my pieces, those employees that I added by hand will be added to the bottom of my list. So you can see my first employee is my supervisor. So we have his salary. And now I can go to my pieces column and enter in my piece counts. So you can see now as I update my pieces, the employee's wages for the day is updated. They're getting their hourly, our 8.67 at 10.50, and then their pieces at the 20 cents. As I add my pieces, you can also see at the bottom, it is updating my totals. So when I'm done with my entries, I can check my totals for this sheet. In the lower left corner, you'll see the number of employees that I've entered. So we can double check that we have all of the employees that were on the crew sheet. When I complete entering in my pieces and hit the next button, it's going to give me a recap of my hours, pieces, wages, and then the wages between piecework, salary, and break. When I hit finish, it will create the lines for everybody on that crew. Oh, we just missed the salary, there we go. So we have our base hourly, our rest and recovery, and our incentive pay. I accidentally forgot to delete the rest on the supervisor, so I'm going to go ahead and just hit delete on that line. So you can see each employee has their three line items created. Now if you're wondering um, the rates on the rest and recovery, this has not been calculated yet to the average piecework rate uh, or average uh, rest and recovery rate. That is because that would be done at the end of the week once all of your daily timesheets are entered in. 
To calculate the rest and recovery pay rates, you can either use the rest and recovery pay rate report or the batch report on the reports menu. And the program will take all of the employees' entries and calculate their average hourly rate and update our rest and recovery line items. If you use the timesheet number and you've done multiple entries, you can always right click and go back to the timesheet number to pull up a specific timesheet and edit or make any changes as needed. We hope this video on the cruise sheet entry wizard will help you save time and make your payroll entry easier. If you have any comments, suggestions, or any questions, please contact our support department at support at datatechad.com.